Welcome, in front of me is a Huawei Nova 12S and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So let's get started by opening up our settings and we can start off with the super device option which is unique to the Huawei device or brand more like. And what it allows you to do is something similar to what Apple offers, which is linking their devices all together so they can work interchangeably. Uh, and uh, here, I don't know if this is all you can do here. So we have cross device clipboard, uh, such as devices. So it, once you basically choose this, it should automatically uh, detect any device, other device that is logged into the same account uh, that this device has. And basically allows you to do things like a link copy clipboards and supposedly more. Uh, I assume it should also probably allow you to pick up calls on your computer as an example. Uh, though keep in mind I haven't actually like fully tested it out and the description right here isn't too informative to be honest and I don't have any other like Huawei for instance computer to test it out how vast this option is. So anyway moving on to the next option we can start off with the uh, home screen and uh, style. Now in here we have a page where it's just designed to help you customize your device. So kind of tailor a bunch of different things like always on display, wallpapers, colors, icons, and so on. Uh, but one of the more important options in here, at least for me, is the home screen settings, right? No, not this one. Home screen style, my bad. And this allows you to switch from the uh, basically smack all your, all your applications smack in the middle of your home screen to something more reasonable like the drawer mode. Drawer mode is not enabled by default, so I do want to point that out. And what it allows you to do is just swipe up and have all the applications in an app tray with an alphabet right here so you can kind of start to quickly find specific uh, application that you're looking for. And also makes the uh, pages a little bit cleaner as normally you would have all the applications between a bunch of different pages, similar to an iPhone. Uh, so I personally prefer the app drawer, that's why I'm kind of showcasing this. Now, moving on, uh, let's now navigate to display and brightness. And here we have things like the uh, dark mode. Now you have the option to enable all day. So this is basically like enabling it permanently, but you do also have the other option, which is schedule dark mode. Now, other devices have the additional option to allow it to swap from sunset to sunrise. Here you do have to set it up yourself, so start and end time. So this is when the device will swap to dark mode. And then end, obviously, where it will then swap at this time back to light mode. So, benefit of this is, during nighttime, if you wake up and you want to check your phone's time, uh, you don't get flashbanged by your own device. Pretty handy. Now. Uh, moving on into another option, it's going to be the screen refresh rate and screen resolution. So we have resolution right here, and we have a couple options. We have the smart resolution, which automatically swaps between it. Then we have high, which is basically 1080p, and a low. Now, a lower resolution will give you better battery life. So if you only strive to have like the bigger, the best battery life you possibly can, uh, then you might want to change it to a low. Though this will only affect screen on time. Personally, I don't really see much of a difference in this kind of resolution changes. So the text might just look bigger, but I don't see it being pixelated. And then below that we have things like refresh rate. Sorry for that. Um, yeah, we have refresh rate and here we have a couple different like dynamic, high and standard. So again, uh, when it comes down to battery consumption, uh, standard will be giving you the best battery life, while dynamic will be the better go-to option as it kind of offers you the two different modes as 60 and 120. So 120 will be running when it needs to be, which is for instance right here, 120. When I stop moving, it will automatically swap to 60, giving you or trying to give you better battery life. But like I said for uh, just straight up battery uh, life purposes, you probably would want to select the standard. Now, uh, moving on to the last option, it's going to be the gesture navigation, which can navigate, uh, which can find under system and update, system navigation, and right here we have gestures. Now, if you have never used those before, you can go through the guide just so you can learn how to use them. They are pretty simple you are used to it uh, and it offers a more convenient way of navigating through the device. I personally find it that 
swiping from a side it's much more convenient to go back rather than having to press a specific button somewhere uh, at the bottom of your screen which usually isn't positioned in like the most optimal place now additionally we also have settings in here um, which allows you to show navigation bar this is actually turned off by default which is surprising so when enabled it just gives you there we go this bar at the bottom now it really looks like an iphone for some reason um see so yeah, i personally like to have it off as it just makes the display look a bit cleaner and then uh, slide it across for to switch application oh there we go so you can kind of swipe again iphone like it's basically ripped off straight from there so it does try to mimic it quite a bit by the looks of it but anyway with that being said and this concludes the tweaks and tricks that i want to show you so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching